Hello, my name is Ray, and I'd like to welcome you to God Talk. We're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 7. I believe this is a really important chapter in light of all that's going on in our social circles today. Matthew chapter 7 is one of those chapters in the New Testament where it has a lot of famous quotes from Jesus that many people always seem to pull out of context when wanting to preach on a certain subject. Now, I really don't think it's proper to do that because I believe this whole chapter is contextually connected and when you pull out a piece of the puzzle, it remains just that, a puzzle. And the message becomes confusing and convoluted. So for the sake of time and understanding, we're going to break this chapter down into six teaching segments. So let's get started. Do not judge. Matthew 7 is the concluding chapter of the famous Sermon on the Mount, and in my opinion, one of the most important. It starts with a commandment or a guideline about judging others and ends with some tough words spoken by Jesus that are hard to swallow. Overall, the subject matter has a lot to do with discerning ourselves and others for the purpose of restoration and warning to avoid hypocrisy at all costs. We're going to break down this teaching into six different parts. There's a lot there. So let's have a look at the first part. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Okay, for now we're going to stop there. Do you find this passage a little confusing? The words of Jesus here seem a little bit contradictory, wouldn't you say? For instance, in the first line, he warns us not to judge, but then tells us to remove the plank from our own eye before removing the speck from a brother's eye. And then he follows up with advising us not to give dogs or pigs anything of value. Well, my question is, how are we to know in the first place that there's a speck in our brother's eye, or a log in our own eye, for that matter, if we don't judge? The same goes for the commandment about giving dogs and pigs anything of value. How are we to know who the dogs and pigs are if we don't judge? When we determine those things, are we not judging? To fully understand this passage, we really have to take into account who Jesus is talking to in this time. Now here, he would be speaking to a Jewish audience with some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law present. As it states in Isaiah 61, Jesus had been anointed to preach the good news. Well, what is the good news? The gospel of grace. The old covenant of the law was coming to a close, coming to an end. And Jesus himself was bringing in the new covenant of grace. We need to remember the old covenant of the law always brought condemnation, where the new covenant, the gospel of grace, always always points to redemption. Always. So in the first few lines here, do not judge or you will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Jesus here is setting up some boundaries. He's saying, you're not to judge anyone through the lens of the law because the law brings condemnation and you are just as guilty. So instead, approach them through the lens of the gospel of redemption. In other words, if you see that your brother is struggling with something, you are to seek to help and restore him, as opposed to adding to his guilt. Part of that may be helping him gently in love to see the errors of his ways. But, adds Jesus, now how are you going to do that if you're four times as blind as he? Now, there is a little bit of an angry, sarcastic tone here, as I believe he was indirectly addressing the Pharisees and the teachers of the law at this time. Who should know better? Later on in Matthew 15, 14, there's also an account of Jesus warning his disciples to stay away from the Pharisees, calling them blind guides, and mentioning that if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. 
So what could possibly be the blindness that stops us from being successful in helping to restore our brother? Well, we could be struggling with the same sin or problematic situation. How can we possibly address to him the error of his ways if we're knee-deep in the same puddle? Before we jump in to correct or help to restore anyone, we need to examine ourselves. What measures are we taking to make sure we are spiritually healthy enough to come alongside someone who needs guidance? We are all to be imagers of Christ. That means leading by example. The old adage, do as I say, not as I do, doesn't fly here. But if we're struggling with the same issues, maybe we should consider this a wake-up call for ourselves and an opportunity to ask our brother if he would consider joining us to seek counsel under the care of a third-party person to deal with this shared issue. Accountability with each other is a necessity in the redemptive process. You know, another thing which may blind us is that we may not know the correct details or circumstances of the situation. You know, in some unforeseen ways, we might be prejudging someone because we believed a rumor or false information about them. I once attended a funeral accompanied by a youth I was working with who lost their friend to suicide due to cyberbullying. It was really sad. Many of the young people attending the funeral had aided in the bullying, now sorry for their actions because they judged this poor girl based on rumors and gossip. The way of confronting someone in this manner is not driven by a desire to help or restore an individual, but only to hurt and destroy them. That is never the intention of the gospel. Remember, the lesson here is not only about judging others, but hypocritical blindness. We need to examine ourselves and the situation concerning the person before we get involved. Is this person doing something morally destructive to anyone or themselves that they need our guidance? Or is our judgment on them based on our own spiritual preferences? In other words, are they doing something or acting in a manner that just ticks us off and really has no ethical bearing whatsoever? Or is there a real problem here? We have to have good ground before we take the next step, confronting people because once we open our mouths, there may be relational consequences. Another thing to consider is, is that person a believer? If they're not, are we overstepping our boundaries? As Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5.12, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? If we found ourselves in a position where we're discerning the actions of a non-believer, it would probably be because of a legal or safety issue then we must handle it in a way that would give glory to Christ, for we are his imagers, both in and out of the church. If possible, we should really get to know the person better on a relational level before we pass any discernment. I'm sure all of the disciples had preconceptions about each other in their little group before they really got to know each other. And that gang of ragamuffins, man, there was a tax collector, a zealot, a few tradesmen, and a bunch of fishermen. Not the usual combination of people to get together every Friday night after work to enjoy each other's company, especially back then. They basically had one thing in common. They knew Jesus. And because they knew Jesus, they got to know and learn about each other. He is the common ground. He's the common ground in which we must base all relationships. That's why the commandment to love God with everything we have comes before the commandment to love our neighbor as ourself. Without seeing each other through the eyes of God, loving each other and ourselves through every circumstance is simply not possible. We're going to stop there for now. Thanks for joining us tonight. And next week, we're going to take up where we left off. We're going to learn about who these dogs and pigs are that Jesus warns us not to give anything of value. And remember, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below or send me an email at godtalk41 at gmail.com. godtalk41 at gmail.com. Have a great evening.